This video was brought to you by Curiosity Stream. When it comes to Ukraine, Serbia has been an outlier in Europe. That's because Serbia refused to join in with the EU sanctions on Russia. And while other European cities have been covered with Ukrainian flags, Belgrade has been filled with pro-Putin and pro-Russia rallies since the war began. However, in the past month or so, the tide seems to have turned. And just last week, in an interview with Bloomberg, Serbia's president declared that Serbia didn't support Russia's invasion of Ukraine and didn't recognize Russia's claims to either Donbass or Crimea. So in this video, we're going to look at Serbia's original position, why it changed, and what this means for both Serbia and Russia. So, Let's start with a bit of context. The Serbian government claims to be neutral on the issue of Ukraine, and Serbia has voted in favor of UN resolutions demanding Russia's withdrawal from Ukraine in the past. Nonetheless, officials and state media have spent most of their time criticizing NATO and parroting Kremlin talking points. And it's fair to say that Serbia has been more sympathetic than most to the Russian point of view. As we see it, there are basically two reasons behind this. Close cultural ties between ethnic Serbs and Russians, and Serbia's bitter history with NATO. Now, the cultural links here are pretty undeniable. The two countries share a Slavic and Orthodox heritage, a common use of the Cyrillic alphabet, and often refer to one another as brothers in political commentary. And this cultural affinity naturally translates to good political relations too. A poll from Dermastat found that, when asked which world leader they favoured, Serbs' favourite was Vladimir Putin, with 40% of respondents rating him highly. And Xi Jinping came in second place with 12%. That same poll found that some 51% of Serbs would vote against EU membership in a national referendum, with just 34% saying they'd vote in favour. The other reason, though, is about NATO. Now, this is a controversial topic that would require a whole other video to cover in sufficient detail. But essentially, on a handful of occasions, NATO have made some pretty major interventions in the Balkans, which Serbia generally haven't been keen on. Perhaps the most contentious of these is the Kosovo War, where NATO intervened decisively on the side of Kosovo, which still houses NATO's largest permanent force. Now, unlike the vast majority of the international community, Serbia still refuses to recognize Kosovo as an independent state. But Russia is one of just a handful of countries which takes Serbia's side on this dispute, and also refuses to recognize Kosovan independence, which is another reason why Serbia is pretty friendly with Russia. Anyway, the TLDR is that Serbs have a long and complicated history with NATO, which is why they broadly sympathize with Putin's anti-NATO narrative, and explains why, when Russia first invaded Ukraine, pro-government tabloids ran front pages declaring that Ukraine had in fact attacked Russia. In fact, according to polling, nearly two-thirds of Serbs blame NATO for Ukraine, while just 10% consider Russia as mostly or entirely to blame. In fact, in Belgrade, Serbia's capital, Putin t-shirts are on sale together with caps emblazoned with the pro-Russian Z logo. Similarly, Serbia's president has continually stated that it would not be in Serbia's interest to join in with EU sanctions on Russia. And in May, Serbia announced that they'd agreed to an extremely favorable deal with Russia for natural gas, with a price three times lower than other European nations during the summer, and 10 to 12 times lower during the winter. Unfortunately for Putin, however, Serbia's support for Russia has been waning as the war has dragged on. Now, relations took a slight hit last May when Vladimir Putin cited Kosovo's unilateral and Western-backed declaration of independence as legal justification and a precedent for Russia to recognize Donetsk and Luhansk. Then in September, Serbia said that they couldn't recognize the results of Russia's sham referendums in Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson in part because it looks hypocritical to endorse Putin's territorial claims, but not Kosovo. So relations have been strained for a while now, but in the last month or so, Serbia's president has suddenly taken a more concrete stance against Putin. In an interview with Bloomberg on January 18th, he said that, quote, 
We, from the very beginning, said that we are not able and we could not support Russia's invasion against Ukraine. And that, quote, for us, Crimea is Ukraine, Donbass is Ukraine, and it'll remain so. While he did go on to say that Serbia wouldn't join in with EU sanctions on Russia, he did reiterate his intention to join the EU eventually, insisting that, quote, I know the EU is our path, there are no other paths. So what's happened? Why has Serbia come out against Russia? Well, it's probably partly related to the Wagner Group's recent activities in Serbia. That's because earlier this month, the Wagner Group ran an advert on Russian state media in Serbia, asking Serbs to fight in Ukraine, and released a video showing Wagner officials training a group of Serbian mercenaries in Zaporizhia. Now, this didn't go down too well in Serbia, not least because fighting for foreign armies is banned under Serbian law, and several people have been sentenced for doing so. Serbia's defense minister even warned that the Serbian state intended to prosecute any Serb that fought for Wagner. And the day before he gave the interview to Bloomberg, he appeared on national TV to remind Wagner that their activities in Serbia were illegal under Serbian law. However, while this Wagner dispute might have made a bit of a difference, this major shift in tone might have more to do with the fact that Serbia's president has apparently realized that he's better off siding with the EU than with Russia. While Russia might have been able to provide cheap gas, Serbia has been moving out of Russia's trade orbit for years now. And in 2021, they did 10 times as much trade with the EU as they did with Russia. As a candidate country for EU membership, Serbia also receives hundreds of millions of euros in EU funding per year, and has now received a total of nearly 4 billion euros worth over the last 18 years, making the EU by far Serbia's biggest donor. And with Russia's economy expected to decline in the coming years, Serbia's president has apparently decided that he needs to prioritize relations with the EU in order to keep the Serbian economy in good health. On top of that, Russia's failures in Ukraine have proved that they're not that much of a reliable security partner either. Their president explicitly acknowledged this in September too, when he told the Serbian media that Russia's retreat in Kherson demonstrates that Serbia needs to, quote, create its own future and take care of it in a military sense. The final thing worth mentioning that might have affected this change of heart is the ongoing situation in Kosovo. For those of you who don't know, tensions between the Kosovan authorities and ethnic Serbs in northern Kosovo have been rising as Kosovo has tried to implement a new law requiring ethnic Serbs, who for the most part don't recognize Kosovo as an independent state, to use Kosovan license plates instead of Serbian ones. While this might sound like a fairly minor technical issue, this is an important issue of statehood for them. And things nearly boiled over in December when Kosovan authorities sent ethnic Albanian Kosovan police officers into northern Serbia, which is prohibited by both Kosovo's constitution and the Brussels Agreement, which requires police forces to be majority Serb to reflect the ethnic constitution of the region. Now, the EU and US have been trying to negotiate a settlement between the two sides for the last few years. And Serbia's president is probably hoping that by taking a stronger stance against Russia, he can convince the Europeans and Americans to take a stronger stance against the Kosovo authorities as a sort of geopolitical quid pro quo. And on Tuesday, the US envoy to Serbia actually made it explicitly clear that they considered Ukraine and Kosovo to be linked issues when he said that the US would pressure Kosovo into accepting ethnic Serbs' quote, right to live in northern Kosovo if Serbia joined in with EU sanctions against Russia. Whatever happens in Kosovo, though, Serbia's vocal dissent is likely bad news for Putin, who seems to be increasingly running out of friends. If you want more from TLDR News, then you should check out Nebula, the streaming service where you can watch all of TLDR's videos ad-free and where you can check out a whole bunch of exclusive videos which will never come to YouTube. There's a whole load of TLDR over there. So if you're a big fan of the channel, then that's the best way to watch and support us. If you'd like to sign up, then you can get access to Nebula via the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Curiosity Stream is home to some really interesting documentaries, many of which our audience are sure to enjoy. And the good news is that if you sign up to Curiosity Stream using the link in the description, you'll also get Nebula thrown in for free. That's two streaming services for less than $15 a month. The link is down below, and thanks for your support.